How's everybody doing today? This is Noah with the Life of the Zigs, and on today's video, we're gonna be checking out this brand new AgriFab Toe Behind Broadcast Spreader. So let's get started. So you may ask, why do you want a toe behind broadcast spreader? Well, you can have multiple reasons, such as you need to apply lawn seed, fertilizer, or any other products that need to get spread around. Now the convenience of a toe behind spreader is that, well, you can just sit on your lawn tractor or anything else that can pull it and just drive it around versus having to walk around and maybe taking more time doing that. The nice thing with this broadcast spreader is that it has 130 pound hopper capacity, which most bags are not gonna be weighing 130 pounds. So whatever bags you have, whether it be grass seed or fertilizer, you can just cut them open, dump a whole bag in there, and get to going. I do wanna put this to the test, however, though, because according to the reviews on Amazon, people were not a big fan of this, nor were they really a big fan of any toe behind spreader. A lot of people complained about the gears having issues and that them breaking while they were using them or just using it one time and then trying to use it the next season or the next use and it broke. So I'm really curious to see how this is gonna hold up. Now with all that being said, let's open the box up and get to putting it together. So as you guys can tell, this is a pretty good sized box. Well, let's crack it open and see what's inside. First off, it's kind of messy in here. Stuff's just thrown around from the looks of it. Nothing's really packaged the best. Here's your uh, adjuster for how much stuff you want to put down. Some brackets, tow bar, linkage, framing, your gearbox, your actual spreader, manual with parts inside, more framing, and last, but certainly not least, the actual hopper and uh, I guess the tires. <laughs> so now that all that's tossed aside, I'm gonna get to reading the instructions here and figure out how to uh, put this together. All right, so it does come with two different manuals. It comes with a quick start guide right here, which has stuff on the front and the back, which is how to quickly put it together, I guess. And then in the actual instruction manual here, it has a little bit more in-depth, detailed instructions. So I'm gonna try to just use a quick start guide and uh, I'll see if I can get it done with that. If not, I'll try this manual. One thing I wanna point out to you guys real quick is the tools required are right here. It is a hammer, pliers, 7 16 wrench, and half inch wrench. All right, so now that I got all my tools set up and ready to go, I'm gonna put it together. First piece is this tow bar here. I want you to put a cap in the end. I assume that's why they want you to have the hammer. And take the pin and the other pin. Also, when you're doing this, make sure you use the correct pin for this. And the reason I say that is there are two different ones right here. This bigger one is for something else. Use the smaller one for the pin for the hitch. We're gonna take these two pieces right here. Same thing, they need the caps on the ends. Just the long ends for now. The other nice thing about this quick start guide is the screws and all the hardware is to size. So if you don't know, like currently right now it's saying I need to use F, bolt number F. Well. I wanna double check, make sure that's F. It lines up nice and good. So I know this one's F and this is the one I need to use. Then it says use J for the nut, which is a locking nut. And make sure you have it in the right orientation. We'll slide that through. Slide that through. The same thing over here. And start to screw that on. I'm not gonna tighten that down all the way just yet. <clears throat> you will insert these bushings right here into the ends of this piece. Again, you got that hammer. Make sure you flip the other piece the other way to insert the other bushing. So when both the bushings are inserted, it should look something like this. Now what you're gonna do is slide the gearbox through those bushings you just mounted to the frame. Then you're gonna take your C nut with the, a bushing or a spacer, whatever you wanna call it. And you're gonna insert it right in the bottom down here and put the spacer there. And that's gonna slide into the bottom of the other frame. Then again, use your lock nut at the end of this and then repeat that to this other side right here. 
Once that's done, you're gonna take your B nuts and slide those into the other hole on the top. Again, using those locking nuts they provide. Tighten everything down. Now you need to take this metal bracket right here and take these bolts back out. This was just to help line them up. Line those bars up, take those out. Now you're gonna take it and slide that over. And now slide that bolt back through the hole in the bracket we just put on. We're gonna do the same thing to that other side. You also need to take part Y and slide it down the top shaft and clip it in place. Once that's done, let's tighten everything up. This tightens everything down to 32 foot pounds. It doesn't give any torque specs in here, so I'm just using this, which even then 32 foot pounds is kind of bending some of this metal a little bit. Need to put on these two end caps here, which in my opinion, we should have done before we even put these pieces on because it makes it more difficult to install these. As you can tell, they're falling out. They don't like to stay in. So now we're gonna install the spreader with a cotter pin. Make sure you get the longer one. It is not the longest, but not the shortest. There's three of them in the kit. And that's gonna squeeze right through this hole here and you'll bend it to hold this in place. This doesn't slide all the way down to the bottom either, so just keep an eye out when you're sliding this down. Now that that's in place, take your needle nose pliers or anything and just bend it out. Now it's time to install the hopper itself. There's a little square hole right in here that you're gonna stick this fitting in. Again, it kind of acts as a bushing. The hopper will slide down. That bushing popped out. Slide that piece down. Then take this little metal piece here, slide that down, and stick that pin in. Now you're gonna take your D-bolts, slide a washer on, then take a plastic washer and slide that on. And it's gonna go through the four holes that are right here. You will need to maneuver the hopper a bit to make this slide in. And before you tighten any of those up, I recommend sliding all four of the bolts through. Now that those bolts are in, I'm gonna stick on those nuts. Everything's gonna get tightened down now. Everything's nice and tight and secure right now. Now we're gonna go to the control lever and we gotta hook some stuff up to that before we install it. So these are the four pieces you need right here. And it's all gonna attach to the control lever here. Before we install anything, it's really important to remember to see how this lever is forward and it's not backed in that lock position. You need to push it back and lock it out into the off position and then you can install these bolts. So take the carriage bolt and that washer and stick it through. That's gonna go into the bottom of that piece. Flip it over while holding it. Take that washer and the plastic wing nut and screw that down. This is your adjustment selector so that when you're ready to open, you push that, release it, and it opens the amount that you want the hopper to open. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your selector right here, make sure it's in this orientation here with the flat part facing away from you. Slide the first bolt through with a washer. Take a washer on this side and put it there. And slide it through that first hole. Then you'll take your locking nut and screw that on. You're gonna repeat the same process for the other side. Slide the bolt through, while also putting a washer on the other side, and slide that in, and put your locking nut on. This is a little difficult to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my foot to hold it, and screw this down and in. 
Again, one thing to point out is the orientation of this. It showed it being on this side, which if it was on the other side, the lever would be up here so it could get in the way. So you want that to go forward when you release it. Now you're gonna take this linkage bar and on, you'll notice both ends are different. One having a hole at the end for a cotter pin. You wanna take the side without the cotter pin, the flat side right here, and that's gonna go into the hopper itself. So when you raise the hopper up, there is a hole right here that makes this slide. You're gonna take it at a 90 degree angle, a little bit less than 90, and you're gonna fold it this way. Stick that through the hole there and push that in. Then you'll take the last washer you should have in the kit and the smaller cotter pin and you'll stick that up there. Take your needle nose pliers, and open that pin up, and that's it for that. Keeping it in this upright orientation here, we need to add these brackets to each side. But the instructions failed to tell you that the nuts that they told you to tighten down earlier, you need to unscrew them to put these on and mount them to it. So we gotta do that. And we also need to add a bolt here to finally lock this off. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this piece here and line it up with that hole, stick that in there, and I'm gonna put this nut back on here. Not all the way, just so it's loose. Then I'm gonna take this bolt and start to stick it through here. Again, for whatever reason, this is very difficult. Don't know if I didn't line something up the best or what, but it does not slap in easily, I'll tell you that. Definitely understand why they tell you to have a hammer now. Tighten this side down up top here. Loosen up this other side over here. Again, that bolt isn't all the way through there. Slide that there, put that bolt back on. Not gonna tighten that all the way again. And now I need to get this all the way through. I'm gonna take this bolt, thread that on so we don't lose it. Tighten back up here. And now tighten this. And don't forget to tighten this top one. Now we're gonna take these two bigger washers right here and this black plastic bushing right here and it'll get slid on as so. Washer, bushing, washer. Take one of your tires, which have plastic bushings in them. Make sure the fill cap for the tire is facing out and slide those on. Then it has these black caps that grab the hub itself. Put that on and take your hammer. I'm gonna repeat it to the other side. Same thing, big washer, black bushing, big washer with the fill stem out. Take the cap and we're gonna hammer it in. And last but not least, it comes with this black cap. Slide that on the top here. Real quick guys, there's two things I wanna point out. First thing is this hopper right here, the piece that opens and closes, was not shutting all the way. Basically it was staying about a quarter inch open down here. To fix this, what I did was I cut out about another quarter inch off the top of this metal plate right here and then that allowed me to put it in that top hole they have, which then allowed it to shut all the way. It is a little bit stiff though, you gotta push it down kinda hard, but as you can see right here, it's not terribly hard. But this will actually allow it to shut all the way, or else you're gonna have debris flying everywhere when it says it's shut. The second thing that I missed is this big pin that I thought was just an extra part right here is meant to go in this hole in the tire that allows this gearbox to spin. So I'm gonna put that in really quick. The hole is offset a little bit, so I'm not too sure why. Again, I don't know why some of this stuff is so difficult. I don't know if it's something I did or the way it's just made. Just using a flathead screwdriver to kind of push that cap and get some leverage. And it's pulling that middle bar out there for me. So now I should. 
There we go, slid right through. Just make sure to open that up the best you can. I don't think it's gonna flat out anyways. It's really wedged in there, but just as a precaution. So now we got those issues fixed. And as you can see, that's spinning really nice now. That's what I noticed when I went to go take it out is it wasn't spinning. And that's why. So that's what the pin's there for. The instructions really fail to mention it. There's just a little line that points, so. Again, these instructions were not the best, plus that hopper didn't shut all the way, but it's all stuff that can easily be fixed, uh, which shouldn't need to be fixed from the factory, but as you guys all know, stuff isn't made like they used to make it, so. Now, with this being all set up, ready to go, we're gonna go take it outside, and I'm gonna go drop some lawn seed, so let's go do that. So we just had our first issue. It uh, kind of broke apart, the handle did. I'll show you real quick. As you can see right here, handle's totally loose. It lost its bolt, which thankfully that stayed in, but the nut didn't, so I'm gonna fix it real quick. This actually slides on right here. There we go. I think that's pretty good for now. We'll try to run it like that and see what we can get out of it. All right guys, so as you can see using the spreader, it did a decent job, however we had that one issue, right? Where the linkage broke down on the handle. We fixed that issue with putting a new bolt and nut on as well as using some Loctite. However, I am kind of displeased with this product as it's brand new, this is the first time we're using it and something already broke or came off. I know most likely that could be a user error. I don't remember if I was the one that tightened up that nut or not. I don't think it was me. However, if it was, that could have been my fault. I definitely recommend using Loctite though on the nuts as they could easily vibrate off. If you guys wanna buy this product, check the link out down below in the description. It's to Amazon, it's an affiliate link. It helps the channel out, guys. It helps me keep making these videos, so it'd be much appreciated if you do buy it to use that link. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to check out my Instagram page, at the life of the zigs. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good rest of your day.